the curfews and everything started to ease up. I thought it'd be a really cool time for us to go and spend some time in Jay Bay. Not only for me to be able to surf, but for Lindell to be able to have that relaxed mindset while she's pregnant during such a crazy time. We ended up getting a few really, really good swells. I try and get back to Durban as much as possible. I think the place you grow up and the style of waves that you grow up surfing definitely molds you into the type of surfer that you become. And that's what Durban's done for me. You know, those little beach breaks and um, running kind of sand bottom points. I think the surf city scene in Durban, the beach scene is really different than most places. 
uh, obviously you've got the massive city which is right on the sand pretty much and uh, yeah you just kind of get all walks of life a lot of different experiences and um, I think you can grow up pretty fast you know So I was in Cape Town. I was just looking at the charts and basically just saw this east swell just lining up for Durban. The winds looked good, the tides looked good, the bank was good. And so I just decided to jump on a plane and bolt up there and uh, go get amongst it. The winds were a little funky in the morning. And I remember just kind of standing on this porch, checking it, checking it, checking it, trying to decide was I going to go to New Pier? Was I going to go to North Beach? As the morning went on, the conditions just started to get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And uh, yeah, it just was perfect, four to six feet. When I initially took off on the wave, I thought, oh, this is going to be the wave of the day. And I uh, asked a friend if he was going to go. And in the very last minute, it was his turn. And he said, no, no, no. So I spun and went. And pulled into the barrel. And the next thing, saw the doggy door, saw a little light. Try to squeak out. And as I try to squeak out, the whole lip just landed right on the side of me. And I just fell, hit the deck. It was kind of like this loud crack. In my mind, immediately, I just was like, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. Just kind of paddle it off, you'll be fine. Try to stand up on the next two, three waves and just knew at that moment that something had happened. So I went to the beach, kind of hobbled up the sand, told my filmer, hey, look, I think this thing's done. I think I really realized it was serious when I woke up the next morning and could barely walk. When I woke up the next morning and realized I had to get surgery, everything kind of sunk in. 
after missing the Olympics, it just fueled the fire even more. I think at that moment, I just started putting my head down and working really, really hard on, on recovery every waking second. San Fernando Valley. When you do something that someone's done before, you already saw that it's kind of possible, you know? Uh, one thing that got me very stoked, like with Samuel Dende, is that he did like stuff that I hadn't seen before, and that stood out to me. And that is like something that I value very highly in skating and in people, you know, to like kind of dare to do your own thing. Skating a winch here is like is a lot more difficult. You're layering up with all this clothing, your toes are fucking freezing when you get to the spot, you're stiff, you have like three hours of daylight. Plus, when it does rain, it's still so humid that it's wet at the spot. It's a lot of like hardships to get through to actually skate. With like the lack of light, you start your day and you got and you know you only have like a couple of hours of light. And if you work, then you know you go to work when it's dark, you get home when it's dark, and you never see light. And that's like your life for like six to eight months. Just no no light, no sunlight.
three months have passed and you haven't had like proper sunlight. Even the thought of like getting away and that you could just like get on a plane, get out and it's sunny, it's, it's, it feels surrealistic at that point, you know? And then you kind of need that reminder by traveling.
My name is Cameron Myler. I'm a four-time Olympian in the sport of luge. I'm a painter, a photographer, lawyer, and arbitrator and professor at New York University. Um, I'm really curious uh, and I love to I love to have balance in in my life as and you know as an athlete as an artist as a lawyer I love trying to find that that balance which I think all Olympians do uh, of, of body mind and and spirit. So my first artwork is focused on the word believe. And believe is something that every Olympic athlete must do. Believe in, in themselves and in their talents and what they're going to do on the day of competition. And I also have text incorporated so the uh, the lawyer uh, part of me, the one, uh, the part of me that has you know respect for rules and the you know the the foundation of the Olympic movement we find in the in the Olympic Charter, which starts with the fundamental principles. So it talks about you know, what is Olympism. Winter is is magical, and the sort of the the snow and the ice, and being able to you know do different uh, sports in that in that kind of context for me is always something that I've loved. There's so much to be grateful for, and I for me I think sort of seeing the details is uh, is a reminder that you know, there are many small things that we should sort of acknowledge and and be grateful for and and recognize on a daily basis. February 8, 1999. In the Mideast, hundreds of world leaders, many of them bitter enemies, attend the funeral of King Hussein in Jordan. 1915. The Birth of a Nation, a silent movie epic about the Civil War, premieres in Los Angeles. D.W. Griffith's work breaks ground in early filmmaking, but remains controversial due to its racist themes. 1968. A civil rights protest turns deadly in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Three college students protesting a whites-only bowling alley are killed in a confrontation with highway patrolmen. 1910. The Boy Scouts of America, the nation's largest youth organization, is incorporated. And 1931. You're tearing me apart! Actor James Dean, a silver screen symbol of rebellious youth, is born in Marion, Indiana. Today in History, February 8th, Tim McGuire, The Associated Press.
Welcome back in our studio and in today's news, 